We failed in making globalization work for all, and we are failing in making sure that new technologies will inevitably be a force for good because we are opening too much space for new technologies to be a threat for the way our societies live. First, we failed in climate change. It is clear climate change became the defining issue of our time, but it's clear that even today, we do not have enough political will to take the decisions that are necessary to reverse the climate emergency in which we live. We see record levels of concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. We see emissions still growing. We see uh, record levels in the temperature, both inland and in the seas. We see record levels in the progressive rise of uh, water levels. We see glaciers melting, corals bleaching. We see nature being dramatically impacted by humankind. I can we can say that there is a war between humankind and nature, and nature is striking back, and striking back with uh, uh, an enormous power. And uh, we have not yet taken the decisions that are necessary to reverse this trend. We had a failure in the COP25, as you have noticed, in uh, Madrid. We must absolutely be sure that we are able to take decisions in the world, making a commitment to temperatures not to rise more than 1.5 degrees, being carbon neutral in 2050, and having a dramatic reduction in, the, in, in emissions in the next decades. And who's leading today in the world the movement to make politicians take these decisions? Young people. The mobilization of young people has been for us. In the preparation of the climate summit we had in uh, September in the United Nations, the mobilization of young people was the strongest element to force politicians to understand that things have to change. And so it's not only the question of listening to young people, it's the question of making sure that those problems that will dramatically impact your lives more than they are already impacting ours will be dealt with in a way in which you have a determined influence in shaping the policies that will allow us to address climate change. And then globalization. Globalization has produced enormous benefits in the world. Increase in wealth, increase in trade, uh, improvement in the living conditions of the majority of the world population, reduction of extreme poverty. But the truth is that globalization has not been working for all. Many people were left behind and we have seen an increase in the levels of inequality. And this increase in the levels of inequality is today a threat to the social cohesion of our societies. And it is something that is one of the factors of the disquiet that we feel all over the world and that is expressed in demonstrations, some of them unfortunately violent, but that are shaking the basis of uh, political systems in so many countries in the world. We need to make sure that we find a way to make globalization work for all to be able to leave no one behind. We have uh, uh, presented a blueprint for that, which is the Agenda 2030, the Sustainable Development Goals. But what we are seeing is that things are still moving in a way in which uh, if the present trend is maintained, we'll come to 2030 with uh, the Sustainable Development Goals not reached, being somewhere halfway between what we are today and what we want to be in 2030. And the truth is that, again, there is a lack of political will. And that lack of political will can only be overcome if those that will live and will be determinant in the next decades will be able to have a much stronger influence in the way economic strategies are defined, social policies are defined, and uh, educational policies are defined. Uh, to make sure that we are able to have a fair globalization, to have each country with economic strategies, development strategies that are indeed aiming at the whole of the population and to make sure we leave no one behind. And leaving no one behind, there is a central question of equality, which is the gender question that was mentioned. We still live, let's be frank, in a male-dominated world with a male-dominated culture and we still have enormous difficulties for women to be able to play the role that they must play for our world to be more fair, more uh, um, uh, compassionate, uh, and more able
to avoid the, the permanent cycles of conflict in which we have lived. Conflict is largely the result of male-dominated societies, of the aggressiveness of male-dominated societies, and we believe that in a world where there is effective parity, and we have reached parity now in the UN at the top level, we have 90 ASGs and USGs, which is the uh, Assistant Secretary General and the Secretary General, and 90, 90 men, 90 women, and we are aiming at full parity uh, in uh, uh, 2028 at all levels. I believe a world in which men and women are perfectly equal in the definition of the future and the implementation of the future will be a world more in peace, more in justice, and more in truth in our relations. And then the third thing we are failing is to make sure that we have the full use of the enormous potential of the new technologies, digital economy, digital society, artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, enormous potential that we have. We are living a fourth industrial revolution, but let's have no illusions. Many things can become a nightmare if we are not able to make sure that all these technologies will be a force for good. And it will be during the life of the young people of today that we will see the full impact of these technologies in the life of economies and societies. So it's up to you to have a key role to play now in the shaping of the way the world regulates, or at least the way creates mechanisms of control for these situations not to, to become a problem for our societies. For instance, if one looks at the new technologies, there will be a massive creator of new jobs and a massive destruction of jobs. But they will not be the same. They will need different capacities, different skills. So obviously education must be an absolute priority. But most of our educational systems, with the exception of your university, are educational systems in which we learn things, when what matters now is not to learn things, but to learn how to learn. Because we will not be doing the things that we are learning in the university. We will be doing different things. We don't know what. Uh, and at the same time, we will need a new generation of social policies, of safety nets. And we will need a new concept of work. The, the concept of work that we have today probably will not be valid in 20 or 30 years' time. And the balance between work, leisure, and other activities will probably be different. We need to be ready for a different world. And only young people today have the feeling the sensitiveness that this is changing and the capacity to start pushing us to adopt the policies that are necessary to prepare the world for these changes. And then we see how terrorism, hate speech, criminal organizations are using the internet the, uh, in, uh, and the cyberspace uh, not to promote uh, communication, not to promote uh, progress but to put ourselves against each other, to divide societies. And it's absolutely, it's absolutely necessary that uh, we look into the way the international community comes together in shaping the rules or the norms or the forms of cooperation to allow to make internet a cyberspace a force for good that require a knowledge of the digital economy and the digital society that my generation has lots of difficulties to understand.